box that owns it and kind of do like a mental coach thing. Just I want to make sure that that's what I was telling my wife. I got with Gary Brecker. I'm down 70 pounds this year already. Wow. I'm doing that 5K with Bert. And I was like, I want this year. Last year was an incredible year for me. Mm. Man, this is so cool to talk about y'all with this with y'all because I hadn't talked about this with nobody. I was like, last year was an incredible year for me. But I ended the year fatter than I've been in 20 years. I ended the year tired, mm. exhausted from carrying that weight, exhausted, just over. And I was just, I wasn't a great husband last year. Not that I was a bad husband. I just wasn't present. Yep. I was on 300 some days. I wasn't a great father. And I was just like, in the middle of all this, I want to have the best year of my career in 2024. I want to be the fucking healthiest I've been in 2024. I want to be the best husband I've ever been in 2024. I want to be the best father. I want to be the best. Look all the stuff he's talking about. Most of it doesn't really concern his career. These guys would be listing like selling tickets, selling out arenas, booking more shows. He's, it's kind of embarrassing how much of a better human he is. <laughs> then these guys are they're looking at him thinking, fuck, I wish you could say that about ourselves, you know? Oh, it's fucking hilarious. I was mentor. Yep. I want to be the best mentee. I want to be the most financially responsible. I want to be the most present. So you know what I'm saying? Like I went and I was just like, so I looked at March. I was that was already my theory that Brennan is moving off of trucks and racing. He's going into the classic. Yo, that would be mad. Because I said my theory was that his next thing would be like guns or uh, what, what the other thing I said. But yeah, the classic car thing might be a deal. We might start seeing him LARPing as a classic car collector. That would be hilarious if true. That would be hilarious if he pivots from the racing and pickup trucks and 4x4s and shit. Well, not, he doesn't really have a 4x4, but you get what I mean. Well, pickup trucks are technically 4x4s, but yeah. Jesus, that is a good one. That's a good guess. I like that. Pam Jam is saying Jelly Roll's full of shit. Pam Jam is saying Jelly Roll's manipulating everybody. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he's 100% sincere. He's definitely a bit of a charmer. He knows how to use his words. He knows how to be the, you know, he knows how to win. He knows how to win over a room. You know what I mean? He's that kind of guy, charismatic personality type of dude. I get it. But I don't know. I don't think he's a piece of shit. You know, that's what I'm saying. I don't think he's a piece of shit. That's the main thing. Oh, I said guns. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Space Kai. You reminded me. Guns and BBQ. Yeah. So I thought Brendan's next grift on Brendan's, and Brendan's next hobby or interest will be, uh, something to do with guns or something to do with barbecue. Like he might start being the guy that has like a Traeger barbecue or something else and gets into fucking, you know, slow cooking his meat and talking about how the meat falls off of the bone and wearing black fucking rubber gloves, latex gloves and shit, right? That's my, that, that was one of my theories, buying particular knives and making TikToks of him, of him cutting up fucking, you know, um, pulled pork. That would be one of my things. I'm thinking that, that might be the natural progression. I was like, we're going to take March off. Got my teeth redone. I ain't been to the dentist in 20 years, dude. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Went and got my he teeth in. Me, me and Joe, the exact got, same. Like, yeah. Same take thing. Take the time off for yourself. You're getting, you, you're looking great. Yeah. He yeah take the time yeah, again, off. I was getting off the road. Ozempic. Ozempic, by the way, Jelly Roll. It's Ozempic. And for your family, is the best decision you get ever off made. The road. Yeah. Get off the road. Just what I, as a brother. Getting off the road. No. Can, he, he wasn't selling tickets, Jelly Roll. He wasn't selling tickets. And that's why he's off the road. That's why the thing, that's, that's the thing. These guys are talking and acting like, that's the thing. Jelly Roll is being considerate and also being somewhat um, introspective while he's on the pinnacle of his success. Those guys, if you gave Brendan and Brian Jelly Roll success and able to book. My new redacted theory is that the whole anything only happened because Rogan told Bapa she could keep her mouth shut or maybe open. Then when she was flirting with Bapa as she does, he went for it. Because Rogan told Bapa she could... Oh, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. I get what you mean, Akuti, 100%. Because I, th that's my theory with... Um, that's what That was my thinking with the Kalala situation. I think Brendan heard through somebody about the Kalila thing. Maybe it was from Stevie Weeby or somebody. Somebody told Brendan about Kalila being freaky, about her liking to have, you know, threesomes and foursomes and hooking up with randoms, her, her, her sexual history. Somebody told her something about Kalila and maybe some maybe the Kalila story had to do with a comedian or whatever. But so, Brendan heard something about Kalila, you know, maybe actively cheating on Bobby Lee in the past or something, whatever. So... 
I think Brendan heard that and got excited and then thought, oh, if she does that with other people, I can do it too. I'm fucking Brendan Shaw. And he got too excited, but then he didn't read the signs. He didn't read the vibe. Kalala never liked him, even as a person. So immediately, that was never going to happen. She was never into him. I think he just assumed because, you know, I don't know, because how he looks and stuff, that she'd be into him. But she never was. Um, and obviously, it ended the way it ended. But yeah, the Annie thing for sure definitely was a Rogan thing. Because, you know, you remember the early episodes of Rogan with, when Annie was on there? How she'd be cackling and shit and how Rogan would be blushing. Like, you know, and she's got a partic- she's got a type of personality, Annie. The kind of girls that Rogan seems to like anyway personality wise you know the ones that can hang with the boys the ones that know how to keep their mouth shut like she's that she's got that kind of vibe about her you know she's the kind of she's the kind of girl that you know at a house party would suck your dick in the toilet and then come back into the main room with your girlfriend and they act like nothing happened do you know what i mean like so i think maybe that was the vibe and of course you know it ended terribly and then of course when annie then told the world i think that also fucked her that was that that, that prob- she probably would never admit it because it's gonna be it's gonna make the comedians look terrible. But I think Annie coming out and like admitting what happened with Brendan probably fucked her. Even though she did nothing wrong, I think it probably turned a lot of comedians against her because they felt like they she couldn't keep a secret, you know, that she was out to counsel people and shit, that she was one of the enemy, she was a me tooer, you know, they kind of felt uncomfortable with her. I, f- I think it, f- it probably fucked her up. So, um, which is a shame, really. It speaks to how toxic that industry is that a woman can't share her. Um, traumatic ordeal <laughs> like that and kind of move it on but yeah i don't know i don't know who knows who knows who knows who knows but yeah that's a that's a that's a very very good theory there keith t big up keith t whether y'all use this or not friends don't miss the blessings don't just sit at the house no you know Man, me bro go, yeah go no. talk to somebody yeah go take walks go get with some outside Jelly Roll knows that you don't know, but Jelly Roll knows that I told you guys, I told you guys, I told you guys, I think Brendan is like quietly depressed or going through some shit. That's why that, that's why his wife threw that party for him, the 41st special birthday surprise thing. I think Brendan's been moping around in the house. That's probably why he does the whole car thing. That's probably why he's trying to have hobbies and shit to get him out and to get him out of the funk. But I think more time than not, especially now he's not doing comedy, he is moping about in the house a lot. I told you. I told you. There's some truth to that, man. I told you. Bad thinkers. You know what I mean? Like, take this opportunity to read a book you've been wanting to read. Like, I did all that in March, and I felt... When we got on the plane to come here, dude, I've... No, I like I like um I like Annie. I'm not gonna lie. I like Annie. Annie was on um Tim Dillon recently. She was on a Patreon episode of Tim Dillon. Um, if you're on his Patreon, definitely check it out. She's really funny. I like Annie. I think Annie's cool. I just think you know she's full of shit. Of course, with the reason why she had to leave to focus on her comedy. She just didn't want to do trash tunes anymore. I understand. And obviously, the Brendan thing was maybe a bit of a misstep. But um, you know, I like her. She's quite funny. I actually like. Her. I'm not gonna lie felt more inspired it's a way of ready. reaching beyond yourself because mm. what happens when you're as busy as you are with this fame stuff is you start becoming the center of your own existence mm. and it feels like you <laughs> brian is fucking weathered brian take a break man go home go look after your family you need to be on the podcast though look how old he is look at him you've had your time in the sun bro you've got a lot of money your parents have money like you're not gonna hurt for money like just go home. Put your feet up, man. Relax. Why are you still on podcast yapping? Like, fuck, bro. He is old. Look at that. That's an old fucking man, isn't it? Back in my day. Jesus. And also, put a regular wedding band on. You're not a fucking crossfit athlete. You don't need a rubber silicone wedding band ring on. You don't need one of these. You're not a fucking marine you're not a CrossFit athlete. You don't do jujitsu. Like, just wear, wear a regular ring. You're not lifting heavy machinery or like, you know, doing fucking yard work every day. Like, honestly, this this fucking cosplaying as like one of the lads, Black Rifle Coffee Crew, bang bang. It's like, oh yeah yeah. You have to do that, but I think the most important thing in how to manage anything like this or in your life in general, as I get older, is you have to reach beyond yourself reading books like reading a great novel yes. about someone else's experience someone else's yes. life i'd say brian telling jerry Roll to read a book is hilarious 
sounds like a little thing. It's so fucking Give important. Give you perspective. You'll learn more about life. But, but I think Brenda doesn't read any books, by the way. Too, Jelly, where I connect with you, like it's we're on the same vibe. Like same thing last year, just too, Jelly, where I connect. Okay, this is going to be the best bit because he's going to make all of this about himself. This is, I'm sure, about confidence in my bones. He's going to make whatever Jelly Roll said about himself, about himself. Oof, by the way, he looks very inflamed here. What's going on? Those empics stopped working. The lips are plumpy. The cheeks are really fat. Is he back onto the whiskey again? God damn. Maybe, maybe it's just a bad angle. Let's see. Let's see how he makes it all about himself. Go on, Brendan. Do your best. With you, like, it's, we're on the same vibe. Like, same thing last year, just hustling, hustling, hustling. And I stopped, and I was like, I, I don't like who I'm becoming. Because everything, and I don't know how to balance it. Mm. Like, By the way, him not liking who he's becoming. I, the, thing, the thing about this, which is really insulting and really dumb, is that the reason why he actually quit is because he's not selling tickets, right? He's not in demand anymore. Like, towards the end, he was having to cancel dates last minute all the time. He canceled a big European tour and the UK tour he's meant to, meant to do, which I bought tickets for. And it got canceled, I think, two weeks before. Then he made some lie about why it got canceled. He said he was going to get rescheduled. He said he would explain. He never explained, never got rescheduled. Cool. But he's having to cancel a lot of dates, apart from the UK one, just regular like, club dates in and around, um, you know, LA and shit. So clearly things are on the downward trajectory for him. Gringo Papi special was rightfully panned. Um, he's obviously not, you know, been putting himself in the best light on podcasts and shit. So this inevitable end was inevitable. So it's actually his benefit to be like, you know what? I had my time. It was fun. The doors still open. I have done stand up. I can jump back whenever I want. But at the moment, I'm trying to do this content thing. You don't even have to explain too much about why you quit. But just be like, yeah, like, you know, I had my run, like the door's not fully closed. I can always go back and, you know, I have clubs emailing me all the time, offer me dates. That's always an option. But for now, I want to take some time out and assess my options. Cool. But he's making it seem like he had all of these bookings, all of these. It's like you didn't have anything. There was no offer for your second special you put up on YouTube, which everyone does now, but he made it seem like everyone was kind of fighting for him and that and that he decided to bet on himself and put it on YouTube. No, you put it on YouTube because it's the only place people wanted to, the only place you could put it up on. Um, and then, you know, the comedy thing didn't work out because he's not funny. And unfortunately, he's got too much recorded content out there now. People can see here how he's not funny he is. He's not improving as much as he should do, given the time that he's got. He's been in stand-up and people stopped going. It's perfectly okay does that happen because it's the truth but this narrative he's trying to spin that you know i'm too busy hey, bro if he was booked and busy if this guy was booked and busy same goes with brian callen they would be on the road all the time look at the proof in the pudding tom segura and burt kreischer two of the most popular stand-up comedians you know in their crew maybe not the funniest maybe not your favorites but they don't miss an opportunity to go on the road Bert's probably missed the entirety of his teenage daughter's, you know, childhoods, basically. You know, Leanne Crash has basically had to raise those girls by herself. If you look at it from the outside in, you heard what he has to say. He's not been really present as a dad, really, for the most part. Because why? Because he's booked and busy. Most of these comedians don't turn down gigs. I've don't, I've never, I don't think I've heard of a single comedian who said, I'm taking time off to go and, you know, chill with my family or my wife is pregnant. They don't do it. They don't ever do it. There's, there's understanding in their career that, the the, the 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 chance to be under the spotlight the chance to be in the you know to be a popular person to be famous is very fleeting so i think there's an understanding in all comedy with all comedians with all partners and shit that you know while i'm here and i've got the fucking light on me i'm gonna fucking go for it and if that means missing funerals weddings you know um you know poetry recitals whatever unfortunately i'm gonna have to do it and they agree to it that's for the most part so Let's not spin these lies, my friend. Like, I, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I had to call my manager, Lex, you know, who's been with you for 17 years. I told him, I said, I don't know what to do, dog. Like, I'm, I'm a, always been a good dad, but I can be a much better dad. Mm. Look at that. He just copied what fucking Jelly Roll just said. He heard that what Jelly Roll said, which is a pretty good line, right? I, I could be a better husband, right? That kind of thing he was saying. And he just copied it. He's literally a chameleon. He's literally a chameleon. He will parrot what you said to him and act like he said it. And he, that's why I said I don't think he lies as much as he probably, it probably seems like he does. I think he just forgets what he says before in the past. You just forget. 
You just make up some new. Well, that is technically still lying. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> I get what I'm, I get what I'm going wrong there, but he just repeated back what he said <laughs> in his own words. Oh, Brendan, never change, bro. Never change. I'm a decent husband. I could be much better. I'm a good podcaster. I could be much better. Good podcaster. And I, my car stuff, the merch, the stand. My car stuff, the merch, the stand up doesn't exist. I was like, some. I'm about to break, dog. Right. So if you have all those verticals, podcast merch, YouTube content, you know, let's say podcast merch, uh, food truck diaries, car content stand up and podcasting the one that you drop is stand up didn't you want to be on snl when you're always the funny guy in your school or in your class and you didn't want to do sports and it was your dad that forced you to do sports you know did you want to get past at the comedy store didn't you want to perform at the mothership what happened to that so all of a sudden comedy was the first thing to go out all those things you could have dropped merch you could have pulled back on the podcast a bit i don't know what to do yeah. spread so, so would you spread too thin yeah Spread too thin. Nice. No ticket. Look, look at J Rod looking at him. He doesn't believe him. Deep down, J Rod doesn't believe him. Deep down, he doesn't believe him. Spread too thin. Yeah, right, bro. There's no such thing. There's no such thing for these guys. They love to be booked and busy. They brag about how busy they are. They sometimes complain and humble brag about, oh my God, another flight, another hotel, on the road all the time, haven't slept in my own bed. They love it. Something has to give. Yeah, right. So I just, I just pulled back. Yeah. I was like, let me, let me chill for a second and then analyze and tr try to figure this stuff up and then get back to it. And since I've been off the road, like never been in better shape, never been a better dad. Never in better shape because you took a Zempic. Have you noticed that Brendan doesn't post clips of himself in the gym? And this is somebody that's always posting every thing that he does that's good on social media. What have you realized? He doesn't post gym clips, doesn't post any clips of him riding his e-bike. Guess why? Because he takes Ozempic shots. I don't know why he's lying. Like, we know Brendan. We've seen him enough on the internet. He's done every fad diet under the sun. Not all the way, but he's tried every fad diet. Even at the even at his athletic peak when he was in the UFC, even in fucking football, he was never as trim as he is now. Come on, man. Come on, bro. Let's be real. This is all like ay 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 ay. Dad, like I coach my son's baseball oh, team, yeah, just football team. Oh yeah, what is now? Oh yeah, he's on spring break. Yeah, yeah. like I've never been happier. Yeah. Because it's just to your point, and yours is on a much grander scale, so I can only imagine. But even with me, like humble brag, like running the business, fake, um, fake what you think called, um, what's that word called? Fake whatever, you know. But that word, uh, there's a term for it. I forgot it, mate. Business is all the business I do. I just call my manager, and he knows me. Like I don't say shit. I'm, you know, this pretty mentally tough. You know this, and I was like, I'm about to break, dog. Yeah. I don't know what that means, but I need help. I'm about to break because you weren't selling tickets. I wish you could just be honest and just say, look, I didn't know what was going on. I went from selling out comedy clubs. To, I went from selling out theaters to not being able to sell 50 tickets at a comedy club. So it was causing me a lot of stress, giving me a lot of anxiety and really stressing me out because I've put a lot of value in that. Because if no one wants to buy my tickets, that means no one likes me or whatever. Be vulnerable, be honest. So I decided to put all my time and money into, you know, cars and, my time into raising my kids and being there for them to basically like, come on, bro. Like at least have one, one moment in your life, be honest and vulnerable and real. Like, fuck bro. Not every time you have to keep up this charade that you're a big deal. Dude, I'm telling you, man, you ever want to come out to Tennessee and hang out in that cabin for a week, dude, it did great for me. Yeah. It was some incredible for me. me dude. He's never, he's never and, doing that. Look, he, he knows he's not, he's full of shit. He's never doing that. And, uh, it's man, I'm, you're doing the right thing, man. It's it's important, and it, and you're going to have a renewed sense about it. Like, yep. I'm ready for this year now. Yeah, I was yeah. telling Miles that I am. I'm going to do. I'm going to start doing a month of just self stuff every year. Yeah, I'm going to take Brilliant. a month every year and just and, and go deal with you... the dentist. Go see the doc. I didn't have a doctor. I've been three years into traveling and realized that I've been like still minute clinicking out here. Bro, I you know what I'm saying. Damn. You're like I need a doctor. Bro, I buy I buy <laughs> medications off the dark web. Yeah. The dark, or that this is the truth. When he does stuff like this, this is the truth because his mouth moves faster than his brain. The dog, like he didn't want to say it, but it came out too fast. I mean, verbal diarrhea. So Brendan buys his addies on the dark web. He actually knows how to use it. So I guess he did. He did his research since BGL got dumped. He probably did his research. Maybe downloaded Telegram or something. 
got on those shop bots and started buying some fucking, you know, pretty easy to use. Started buying those, um, those addies. <laughs> Look at Brian's face. Looking at him. I don't know if you want to admit that, bro. Look at Brian's face. Uh, dad? Cat papa? I don't think you want to admit that on the pod. <laughs> Brendan out here buying class A drugs. Maybe he got his Ozempic from the dark web too. Maybe he got Ozempic from the dark web. Some one of those off brands on the dark web. I just got a general doctor. Me too. To give me a checkup, I, dude. I now nah, um, what you call it? Um, Uche. The dark web has changed now. The dark web isn't what it used to be. It's really easy to use. There's loads of mobile only browsers you can use to access dark web markets. A lot of markets are shit. I don't know about you guys in the States, but in Europe, people don't really use dark web markets anymore. Mostly it's all done on Telegram. There's like shop, there's like, there's a complete, there's a complete account. You can, what you can, there's, there's certain pages you can get logged onto that will give you every type of drug that you want to buy in whatever location you are at and all verified with reviews. And they've got shop bots on there, like these little automated, you know, um, AI basically bots that you can use to kind of buy stuff. So it's pretty harm. It's pretty easy. It's kind of, it's kind of become very dumbed down. It's easy to do. Back in the day, Brendan would have never been able to use fucking markets ever. But nowadays, I think he can. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm saying he's not smart enough. You just download Telegram and open it. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you're right. Could he download Telegram, navigate to the pages or to the sites or to the groups that have all the shop bots on them? discern which ones aren't fake deposit my, like yeah that's that's a good that's a good point send the fucking litecoin bitcoin or whatever to the wallet and put the format do the address format the correct way yeah you're probably right 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 <laughs> brendan thinks incognito mode will hide and <laughs> no uche Brendan thinks incognito mode is the dark web. <laughs> That's what he thinks. He puts incognito mode. He says, how to buy Addies in Calabasas. <laughs> he thinks the dark web is incognito. That's what he thinks it is. Oh, <laughs> Addies shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon Prime Addies. It's like what? <laughs> Got a general doctor in March. I went and did all that stuff. Like went to the cardiologist. Same. Finally. Like shit. I've been avoiding mm -hmm. kind of some grown up shit. Yeah. I'm just I just adulted for a whole month. Picked my kid up from school. You know what I mean? And taking that time of, off. It, it. I think it. Brian doesn't take the t Brian. You didn't take the time off. Brian needs to take. Brian has done all the time. <laughs> oh my god. Brian has done all the time. Brian looks like he's doing time at the moment. Brian the L man, he needs a rest. He definitely needs a rest. Taking the time off. Taking the time off to be with my family. Like Brian needs a Brian needs all the time. Holy shit, Brian Brian. Would give it, it informs your art too. It makes you a better writer. It makes oh, you a better yes. musician. Because we're constantly and, going, it's yeah, tough. Like, you the, live. the great jazz musicians used to call it woodshedding. Where they would go, literally, they'd stop and they'd just go into the woodshed, and they would, they would. Just... Is that real woodshedding? Let's see. Let's what woodshedding? What? It's called woodshedding, really. Woodshedding term. Let's see meaning. Let's see meaning. Okay, maybe he's right. Yeah, there's a woodshedding is or shedding is a term commonly used to describe the out of practice of some endeavor. Um, some in endeavor, usually in private, to improve one's proficiency in performing it, is typically used to musicians to mean to rehearsing. Okay, cool. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. For once he told the truth. For once he told the blood clot truth. Just play and be alone yeah. and come out with a whole new sound. Yeah. And that idea, like, it's a, it's a really cool thing. It's almost like this uh, aesthetic, ascetic sort of idea of this principle of kind of like almost meditation you know yes and you know stopping. you was talking about getting outside of your own head yeah. that man that struck with me brian because that's another reason i hang out at comedy clubs yeah because i'm not it's not a music club my favorite thing not, to do after totally i perform is to thing. listen to musicians yeah it's so weird hold on brendan brian said he doesn't like music he doesn't do music now he's talking about how he goes to watch musicians perform press exit doubt 
what, what, what are these lies? Do people not remember what they said? Didn't he just say earlier he doesn't listen to music? He doesn't really know music. And now he goes to watch shows. My favorite thing after I've had like a night, if there's a live band anywhere, I'll go and watch that. Yeah, and I want sure. nothing else. It gets right out, out of your head. Yeah. It's not a joke no more. It's like, for me, it's the same. When I get back there, I'm just watching a bunch of homies that do their thing that's so yeah. different than my thing. Yeah. It's so disconnected from what I do. And it's not about me. Yeah. Which yep. makes it even cooler. Because even last night, I was just a part of Adam Ray's Dr. Phil. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't about me. And that's just so cool. When you walk so out there and you look around, and I'm just like, half these motherfuckers don't even know. Adam Ray's Dr. Phil. Would, would Brendan ever go in there? I don't think so. I'm a singer. Yeah. They're just like, who the fuck is this fat dude Adam Ray's bringing out? Is he going to tell a joke? You know, yeah, they I can never relate to that. And the community is good, especially the guys, you're, like, the whole community is good too and supportive. For sure. So it's like an outlet besides music. And you I've could, also. I do stand up, though. Have you ever yeah, thought about it? I don't know, man. I, maybe one day later, but it's not hey, even, here's the question. I, I Do would, you need to? He just yeah. talked about he needs a yeah. goddamn <laughs> break. No, that's what's fun. Is that's it's, different, though. Because yeah. you're flirting with yeah, it. I, when you're spending that much time, I feel like you're flirting yeah. with it. No, I just, you know I, how to I do love it because it's, I think I like it because I don't want to try it. All right. Because I will maybe later, but yeah. for now, it's like, I'm afraid like it's like anything else. My, my concept is once I tried it, it would be a thing mm. if I liked it. And I don't need another thing. You know what I mean? I go there to not have a thing. You, you know are, what I'm Jelly, I'm telling you, that's why we're brothers. You and I are the exact same. Because if, if if I start something, yeah. it, it's all in. Yeah, like, like, God forbid I get a laugh in there. Oh, fuck, my manager would hate me. Oh. Like, <sighs> Brendan trying to force commonality and kinship and shit with with thing is just trying too hard me and you are so the same if you let me to start something bro you started stand up and you quit after you couldn't sell tickets what are you talking about you're not really into cars you're just paying fucking garages to fucking do up your cars you don't know how to change the oil you don't know how to change a tire you've done nothing on your car apart from what painting a grill with house paint or changing some decals Get, you don't get into anything heavy. You just start and you just b b fumble your way through. And if it works, it works. It doesn't, it doesn't. The racing thing. No training. I can't. No fucking time spent on the track learning how to drive. No nothing. Just go straight to the top. Try and fucking fake it till you make it and go from there. Come on, man. He's the opposite of like getting into something I go all the way. No, you just spend loads of money doing it to appear like you're a fucking expert. And then later on when it gets boring or it doesn't make the money or get the views that you need, you just jump off it tours i'm fucking living in austin that's, that's a fucking working the fucking little boy room yeah, welcome fucking, my life yeah. dude I, I start with him yeah. why don't you get on and tell a story yeah. next thing you know i'm headlining right. fucking yeah. in australia I would, just, I would headlining in australia exactly that's what you shouldn't have done though you should have started off in small comedy clubs and worked your way up but again papa always thought he's a big deal push him out there i go just tell a story yeah. he goes what i was like we had like how many people 20, he said I would just the first time you ever got on like, stage 2100 people in, in seattle <laughs> and he was like and it, I, that's never gonna happen now imagine the first time look how sad he is thinking about it the first time they're on stage twenty-one thousand people in seattle of all places he could never get that many people to watch him even in la brutal I mean, that's a lot of people when you did never. And he goes, uh, what am I doing? I go, I'm going to pretend I'm late. You go out and just tell a story. He's like, what story? I go, the one you fucking told me the other day. And I would just push him out <laughs> there and he'd tell a story. And then we did that probably, I don't know how many times, 12, 13 At times. Least. And then he goes, uh, and I said, you're going to start doing stand up now. He goes, but I, I don't know. And I go, that's yeah. what you've been doing, Tommy. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's yeah. in front but, of 2,000 yeah, That was but, baptism but, by fire. Yeah. 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 But like you, you better be careful where you point me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm like, nah, I just bought a race car. Yeah. You better be careful where you point me. No one's. So he's acting as if people are pointing him in the direction of the stuff that he's doing. You're doing him, you're doing him out of your own volition. You're doing him because you want to do it. You're not racing cars because somebody told you racing cars should. Or maybe it's not. Hmm. It maybe it's the suggestion that maybe Rogan told him to do other things, and said, "Hey, I see you're into cars. Maybe transition to that." Is that a suggestion? That maybe Rogan told him to do this, and this is why he's saying this in a weird way. Could that be possible? That's the thing that they spoke about when we went to the toilets during that time on that fight companion. Did Rogan tell him, "Hey, knock off the stand up, focus more on the car content." That could go. That could go somewhere. <laughs> no, I'm full he, blown race no, car what? Let's I know. imagine not being able to race. Imagine not being able to race 
a dune buggy, a Volkswagen, a, a souped up or, you know, a fucking off-road worthy Volkswagen Beetle. Imagine not being able to whip that properly, not being able to get it out of gear or, you know, maxing it out only at fucking 50 miles per hour. And the most logical thing you do is like, yeah, I need to buy a race car, not just like get more lessons, spend more time. Surely if you couldn't whip that car, the next logical conclusion would be, okay, let me buy some time and spend on the fucking track and learn my craft, improve my skills. So then, then I can go on to actually buy a race car and I'll be fucking good at it. Why would you go and just buy a race car? People and their money, man. Jesus Christ.